So I can always find my food anywhere I go in Chochukang Stadium. If I want a cheaper option, I can walk further away, 400 meters away from the stadium just to go to a coffee shop and it's very affordable. So for the fan behavior control part, the security is very tight. There is security personnel walking around with walkie talkies just like this guy over here. And then before we went in, right, those from our KFC from a video, there are security checks, uh, like uh, a strict security check uh, by the security personnel over there. So, um, there are rules uh, that is tightly followed to the, uh, to the sports hub rules and regulation later, which I'll show you guys. And also spectators are also expected to follow instruction from the security personnel there, so if they ask you to sit down, you better sit down. <laughs> okay, so this is the sports hub rules and regulations. Chuan Stadium follow closely to this. So spectators are always, uh, are always expected to maintain safe, prudent and respectful behaviour at all times. And this is the list of restricted and prohibited items that the spectators cannot bring in, such as fireworks, flares, laser pointers, spray cans, <coughs> and like flags, musical instruments. Flags, musical instruments, all this, you need fire consent from Chonchukang Stadium. For the ease of, ease of accessibility part, Chonchukang Stadium is awarded level 3 in friendliness level by the Building and Construction Authority of Singapore. Why? Because they have uh, uh, there are facilities avail available for needy, there are ramps, lifts, handicapped parking lots for the handicapped, disabled and the aged. With high accessibility for the needy, right, the stadium is more welcoming and more user friendly. So lastly, high quality games is available at Chakam Stadium. We watch an ethnic game played by Gala International and Warriors FC. And the game is of S League standard, so it's the top quality, the, most, the highest quality that you can find in Singapore. In addition, Chonkong State also hosts SEA Games 2015 Women's Rugby Finals inter school academics regularly. So with high quality games, right, it might attract more spectators to Chonkong Stadium. This makes Chonkong Stadium awesome and world class. World class? This is not a world class stadium. There's so many weaknesses. Firstly, the grandstand. When I was there. When I was there, there's only seats in the middle and the sides are free cheating bleachers. So when spectators go in, they just randomly sit around in their own groups. So it makes it seem like there is no crowd at all, or very little crowd. This gives uh, the players uh, a very poor game, a very poor match day or game experience because there is no crowd. Next, the scoreboard. It was positioned so far away. Can you even see it? Okay, let me show you. Over there. So far away, and so small. The resolution is so bad. Let's see. And halfway through the match, suddenly went off. 
So we have to resort to using our phones to check the, the game app, okay, to follow the game and to check its scores. Then, when I was driving there, there was no directional signage. How am I supposed to get there? How are users supposed to get to the stadium without any directional signage? Luckily, there was this map page signage, which I almost missed, because I was coming from this angle, and I couldn't see it. The roof also couldn't cover, shelter, and protect every spectator on the bridge. Can you imagine having to take out a raincoat or umbrella in the middle of the match? That would be a very negative match day experience. The location. There's a roll of private houses at the back. This is very distracting and unsightly, especially during a match. <laughs> and lastly, <laughs> not to mention, this really angered me. Food and beverages are not allowed, and they are very strict on it. I understand if you cannot bring out outside food and drinks. But even the drinks I bought from the vending machine right outside the, the entrance was also not allowed. <sighs> this is not a good stadium. Hey, Jennifer. Oh, what's this? Well, friend, this is opportunity. Yeah. Can I see your job? Do you know what ultimate food is? Do you guys know what ultimate food is? this question five years ago, none of you would have replied. And this is because five years ago, only about 100 people in Singapore played frisbee. Fast forward to today, there are about 5,000 players in both the recreational and the competitive spheres. The Ultimate Players Association in Singapore is a governing body of uh, Ultimate Frisbee. And not only is this rapid growth of Ultimate Frisbee gaining attention of people like you and myself alike, it is even attracting large companies like Under Armour to sponsor their events. They, currently today, there are more than 10 registered clubs in Singapore and many other school teams as well. One of the local clubs that I would like to bring out as an example will be Freak Show, and this club is even sponsored by the National Youth Council in Cash. We identified this as an opportunity because many teams that are not funded actually organize their own tournaments as a source of revenue. So they will definitely need an event space, right? Some examples include even the Singapore Institute of Technology, SMU, and the local club I just mentioned. Okay, another spot that is growing is Ultimate Apus. Women's rugby. And this is because of changing perceptions in uh, women's participation in sports that used to be known as masculine. According to The Guardian, the number of female participation in rugby has increased by, more than, by about 10 times in the last seven years. And being the host of 2015 Sea Games has showed that Tanjukang Stadium is actually capable of holding a competitive level of rugby. Now, what these two, these two sports have in common in Singapore is that they are both growing at a rapid rate. And as such, it's our recommendation that Shantikang Stadium target these growing sports as a source of revenue by offering them a place to train as well as to host an event. Next, moving on to community outreach. By identifying our strength of community uh, of Shantikang Stadium as one with an existing fan base because of the home team warriors. We would like to emphasize on new development because it is also in line with their initiative. So, we have this program that is organized by the community center in the area, known as the Passion Children Football Program. It is actually organized in their own community centers, but what we are proposing is that we collaborate with the community center to organize it at our stadium. This is in hope of building a sustainable youth sporting culture for many years to come. Lastly, moving on to technology. There is now a governmental push for Singapore towards a smart nation. And we now see the emergence of technology in our daily lives, such as um, Apple Pay, iBanking, all these cashless transactions make things more convenient. When we were at the stadium, we were actually given physical passes to enter and to re-enter. <coughs> Can you imagine how much manpower that takes? So what we are suggesting is the use of technology and e-ticketing systems to simplify the process of buying tickets and gaining entry into the stadium. 
this poses as a convenience for both organizers and spectators, which brings up the attractiveness of the stadium. Convenient? I did think you're getting way ahead of yourself. Eh? Imagine the fans are from Tachukam, right? 
Then I travel to Lavender. Lavender, how many stops? Not one, not two, not three. I never found out how many okay. stops. It's very, very far. Alright, All right. so, uh, updated. Uh, for us, actually, right? So, the stadium will lose an opportunity to market the stadium and therefore there will be a failure to profit on ticket sales. So, Chachukang is one ID stadium.
It's not really healthy or it's more of authentic. Like compared to Pizza Hut, it's a fried food. Obviously, you will choose Masi and Kajang Budi. Yeah. Thank you.